Hello Minions, Munchmo here with a new series I'm trying out for Hawken called Hawken In-Depth, where I'm going to do semi-regular updates and go through some of the components of Hawken one at a time, give people a feel and an idea of how the game really works. So today we're going to start off with something pretty easy and simple, the garage, and I want to talk about some of the things you can do in there as well as other things that go on. So the first thing you do when you play the game, you get your new Mac and you're gonna have to go into the garage and look at it. So we're gonna start with just a random Mac that I have low level, unspecced out and everything, Rocketeer. Why not? It's a good Mac, I enjoy it. We'll talk about the Rocketeer in a later um, setup video. I'm gonna focus on each Mac individually later on. But uh, I wanna just start off by talking about the way the garage works. So first thing you see here is just a general overview of your Mac. You got, you know, your level here, which tells you how far along it is. You've got your name where you can rename it, call it whatever you want. I don't think there's a limit to how many times you can rename a Mac and it uh, doesn't cost you anything at all. Shows your actual XP level, how much XP that Mac has gained and the little symbol the targeting to her, which describes the ability that the mech has. If you can see, each mech has a different little symbol there, and that's how you can tell what they are when you see them in the field. So when you hover over that, it tells you what their ability is, and we'll go into the mech's different abilities in their individual videos. Down here, you can see how the tuning modifications are, where the mech's points are laid out, what's available, that sort of thing. Obviously, hovering over everything gives you an idea of what you're looking at. And clicking on any individual thing will allow you to go in and look at the actual screen. But we're going to continue with the overview here. You can see your weapon slots, which weapons you have selected. Uh, you can see the consumables that are equipped to your mech, uh, your items, and your internals. Now, uh, we'll go over each one of these individual sections. Next up is mech rank. This is something that you can't... Okay, if you click on where it's got the little symbol there, that'll take you to the mech rank screen. And this shows you what you've unlocked to purchase for the mech when you level up to the certain points. So you can see it shows you each individual level of uh, skill you've got, and it's scrollable over here. Now you'll see that you have the option to early. Oh no, this just tells you how much it costs here for each of the unlocks you get. And each level has new things that you can pick up. Uh, let me see if I've got one that I haven't spent my money on yet here to unlock stuff. Is it, where is my scout? I think, yeah. So you can see I haven't purchased the heat cannon costs money that I, I don't want the heat cannon so you don't have to buy everything here but certain things you're going to want to buy because they uh, improve your abilities with the mech um, as you level up new things get unlocked and available for purchase um, so when you hover over the different things it shows you what you need for the xp wise and you can see how much it's going to cost you to unlock those levels in time Next up, you've got the weapons. Each mech comes with a primary weapon and an alternate primary that you can purchase. It's available off the top, but it does cost Hawken credits to unlock, just like most other things. And then you have your secondary weapon, which each mech has a unique secondary weapon or semi-unique. Some mechs share secondaries, but uh, this is not changeable. So if you look here, We've unlocked all the different weapons, and you can actually change between them. And while you're actually in-game, you can do that as well. But you cannot change your secondary. Next up, we've got the tuning. Now, tuning is where you get to go through and personalize the mech to your play style. What you think will make this mech work better for the way you do things. Uh, every mech has different options here, but some of them are fairly similar. So we got the weapons loader, which increases your weapon firing rate. So you can fire more often with uh, your primary and your secondary. Um, you've got your heat sinks, which reduces the amount of Oh, it, yeah, it decreases weapon heat generation. Um, after that, you've got armor. These three are, I think, 
well, shared among most of them. Key weapon loader, heat sinks, and armor. You'll see here that Dr. Feelgood, the uh, technician, has repair torch because technically his weapon is a little bit different than the others, so it's, it's not the same. And let's see if the Predator is any different as well here. Nope, he's got weapon loader as well. And then armor, of course, increases the amount of damage you can take as you put the points into it. Next up, the next four are different among most of the mechs. You've got your boost thrusters, which increases the boost speed. Now, this isn't your actual movement speed. This is just the speed when you're holding down shift to boost yourself forward. You've got the generator, which allows you to regenerate your fuel faster. You've got hydraulics, which increases your run speed, walk speed, and your acceleration. That means it's always active, so it's unlike the boost thruster where it only works where you're boosting. This will increase your speed at all times. You've got radar, which basically increases the range to see where the enemies and your friends are. Other things you've got is fuel tank, which just increases the, um, the actual amount of fuel that your mech can carry. Aerodynamics which increases flight speed and stuff in supposed to like the predator which has hydraulics which is ground speed uh you've got cooling units which it allows your mech to take less time to cool down from an overheat and i th think that may be all of them hydraulics yeah we went over that Suspensions, ah, suspensions, there we go. That's another one that decreases your dodge cooldown time. Moving on, next up we have different items available to your mechs, and there are a lot to choose from. But we're going to start from the top here. Now you'll see there are different items here. You'll see like the detonator Mark 1, and then as you scroll down you'll see detonator Mark 2. Anything that has a Mark 1 has two or three different levels available um, to um, purchase, and the higher the level, the more powerful it is. So you'll see here that you can only have a single detonator. You can't have a detonator mark one, two, and three in there. You can only have either a one, a two, or a three. Now the detonator is uh, it's a slow moving, low damage explosive charge. As it gets up in level, it becomes better and better. It's a straight shot, goes out, hits your target, and then explodes. Hits the ground, explodes. You have no control over it once you fire it. The HE charge is basically a grenade. You throw it out, it bounces until it hits a point, and then you can, it'll explode where it goes. If it hits your target, it'll explode there, uh, or if it bounces off for too long, it explodes. You hold down your fire button for it, and it will fly farther. Next up, we've got the item regenerator. This one just by default, it's passive. All it does is decrease your cooldowns. Hologram. Now, the hologram is different than the uh, other damage dealing ones that have higher levels, where this allows you to project a decoy on the ground that can trick turrets and enemies into attacking instead of attacking you. The higher the level of hologram you have, the more holograms you can drop at any given time. The portable scanner allows you to detect enemies near it and relays enemy coordinates to friendly units. So if you can't see them, but they're in range of the portable scanner, you'll see them on your mini map. And the higher the level for this, the higher the range this has. The radar scrambler, similar but opposite. Instead of it showing you where the enemies are, it shows the enemies fake use all over the mini map. And the higher the level that is, the higher the area which it'll affect. Rocket turret. This is one of my favorites. The rocket turret, it drop it on the ground, and it just starts shooting rockets at enemies. Simple as that. It's not perfect. It has decent tracking, but it has a tendency to miss. But when it hits, it does okay damage. And of course, the higher level you get of this, the better damage it'll do. Machine gun turret is even better, in my opinion, because this is lower damage than a rocket turret, higher accuracy, and higher fire rate. So this is more likely to do damage to your target. But at the same time, you know, there you might have something else that you would prefer. And again, higher level this is, the more damage it'll do. The blockade is a wall that you can just put down. 
Um, basically, you just drop it and it creates a wall there that cannot be passed through. The higher level this, the more damage it can take. Shield is a deployable shield globe that either gets placed on the ground or attached to a mech that protects from damage. Um, it repels incoming fire, and the higher level of that, the more damage it'll absorb. Repair charge, fairly simple and straightforward. You drop the charge, you stand in it, and it repairs your mech. The higher the level of that, the more damage it will f repair. EMP. Now this is a fire and forget. You just fire it off, it goes straight out. When it hits something, it explodes and will shut down any mechs that it affects. Now I think with the EMP, the higher the level it is, yeah, it provides increased projectile speed and duration, and you can use it more often. Uh, next up, we've got... I think that may be most of the items here. Everything else is a higher level. Yep. And so that's the way it goes. It seems that... Um... Oh, I'm sorry. I totally missed the ISM disruptor. That's the new one that they just added with the, uh, the new um, mech. This is a really interesting one because it completely disrupts players' HUD, so it scrambles their display, and they can't see very well at all, and it's very, very annoying to get hit by that. That covers just about all of the items. Now let's go look at the internals. Now the internals affect the way um, the mechs operate. They're basically all passive. Um... Again, depending on how what level your mech is, with the items and the internals, you have more or less space available. So I'll show you here what it looks like when you have a low-level mech. Or is that... No, well, maybe that's... No, that actually is based on your level, I think, here. Okay. So, looking at the internals, you've got the Air 180, which basically allows your mech to do a backflip in midair which wasn't possible before the most recent patch. Uh, simple armor. It increases your uh, damage reduction um, after you die, and it will take away that damage reduction after you get a kill or two assists. Um, basic deflectors. It reduces your incoming damage overall while you're boosting or dodging, unless you're in turret mode. Uh, you'll see that this is basic, and then there's basic failsafe, and then later on you'll see that there's failsafe and deflectors, and then there's advanced failsafe and deflectors. The way they work is they're similar to the items. They have higher levels, so they work more reliably. Now, the failsafe reduces your incoming damage from yourself, so if you have a tendency to accidentally blow yourself up with explosives, this will protect you. Shot Coil completely negates all fall damage. This can be really handy in maps like Origin or um, Uptown, where you got a lot of drops and you're t prone to go off the edges. Uh, basic Extractor. It allows you to gain armor, repair, and energy faster during the game. The Reconstructor allows you to rebuild your armor as after you're out of combat for a certain amount of time. Uh, the fuel converter, when you take damage, it turns it into fuel. It's really handy for a person who decides they want to build a mech that's going to spend a lot of time in the air. Power surger, after you kill someone, you get to move a lot faster. <laughs> and then we move up. You've got your deflectors, your failsafe, and then you've got a repair kit, which basically all that does is uh, allow you to gain more armor from the orbs. Uh, this can be really handy in conjunction with actually de having a deployable repair kit. Um, fuel converter evasive device. As you can see, we've got similar things here. Now, did we... The evasive device, I don't think there is a basic level of that. This allows you to move faster when you're below a certain level of armor. The air compressor... It's similar to the 180, but this allows a mech to dodge while in midair. And then you've got the advanced versions of most of these things, which does the same thing, only better, as their basic and standard um, versions. And then here, 
we've got this thing called the replenisher. This um, will reduce mech's ability and item cooldowns um, when you kill an enemy or assist in killing an enemy. This is a very high-end piece of equipment here. Uh, if you're one of those who really, really likes to use your abilities and stuff, this one will allow you to really, really, you know, use them more often. So, um, I think we've covered all of the internals now, so let's take a look at style. This one, pretty straightforward. It allows you to go in and just make a mech look however you want here. You can change the coloration of the lines here, as you can see. Different mechs have different, uh paint available or different i'm sorry trim lines in different locations and you can paint them different ways now you'll notice that a lot of the paint jobs require you to um to actually use um, meteor credits to purchase and that's one of the great things about this game is that you uh you 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 don't have to pay money for anything that affects actual gameplay and the only thing that you can only get with money is is stuff that you know personalizing your mech and making it look different now you'll see here that you have a lot of different part per options for um making your mech look different here and this is another way to personalize it by uh changing the way they look and it's really neat that you have a lot of different options for how to do that as you level your mech certain parts will become unlocked to give you a an elite style and i'll show you some of that on a mech here in just a moment but you see each of the four main parts of the mech can be changed out to look different here um, and some of them like this one it's possible to not even have the parts installed uh, you can change the look of your thrusters which is really cool looking here um, some of them look awesome um, Personally, I like the pyro burn because it just looks so mean. But they have a lot of different uh, options for the way you can uh, make them look here. You can personalize your repair drones. Um, this is one that I got as part of the Vanguard initiative. Uh, but some of them just look amazing. Like, I like this squid. I, this is one of the new ones that they just introduced. It looks really cool the way it works. Uh, and then you've got the RD Orbit. This is another one that I kind of think would be fun one to have uh, let's go and then you've got mech emotes which is things that you can make your mech do during the battle you can kind of taunt basically here and you can make him ooh, he's serving up tea <laughs> or the dirty dog it does a little ooh he's gonna charge you gotta be careful so oh, there you are and after that we have consumables each mech you have three different um, three different countermeasures you can choose from. An extinguisher, which automatically cools down your mech when it overheats. Battery charge, which will power you back up if you get hit by an EMP. Or a descrambler, which automatically counters the effect of the radar scramblers. This allows you to overcome what the enemies can be throwing at you. Now, these do cost um, Hawking credits to buy, and you can buy them in larger amounts. But you earn Hawking as you play. It's not a big deal. And then you've got emotes, which are hollow emotes. They allow you to have your mech kind of just display a little holographic thing there. Um, so you can be like, no, no, no. And uh, these you can also purchase with Hawken credits. So uh, there you have it. Let me show you now on one of my max level mechs really quick what you can expect from some of the... Um, the style options that are unlocked here with the elite chassis now the elite chassis that you can put out there for the uh, mechs they don't have the option for your paint pattern to show up but you see it, it, it makes them look a lot more badass to be honest with you I mean look at that that looks so much nicer than just the standard but personally I kind of like to be able to have my uh my chosen paints show up on these uh, Macs because it allows me the option to really personalize it more. Um, so yeah, that is basically all there is to the garage. Um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions or thoughts or is there anything I missed, please feel free to let me know. Um, 
If you enjoy this idea of a series, click the like button. Let me know that you look forward to more. And I think next time we're going to look over game modes. Because once you've personalized your mech, the next step is to just jump right in and play. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.